Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, Rainex, Hum by Verizon, State Farm, and WeatherTech. Now, what we've just seen is only one chapter in the new Maserati story. The others are all about Maserati's rebirth on the American automotive scene. Maserati used to be known only for its exotic models. But when they came out with their bi-turbo just two years ago, they joined the upper crust mainstream. That initial two-door has inspired more models, and we recently tested one in depth and previewed two more. This is the first inspired confection up for taste testing, the Maserati by Turbo E. While E isn't an initial that stands for any word in particular, it ends up meaning sport. On the well-finished outside, sport is distinguished by a different grille, fog lights, a charcoal band below the belt, and 205 6014 tires rather than the Biturbo's 195s. But the biggest difference is under the car. The Biturbo E gets a larger anti-sway bar, stiffer springs, and gas shocks for its fully independent suspension. Its steering, though, is still the same as other Biturbo's. That's slow and heavy, which makes it better at high speeds than in the slalom. But the Biturbo E is still much better even in this sort of maneuver than the standard Biturbo. It does still plow when the wheel is first cut, but with less vengeance. And its rear end will go light if you lift the throttle. But it's easier to control in the Biturbo E. There's less body roll in the E too. So overall, slicing and dicing in the E is much smoother than in the standard car. Of course, there's still plenty of power to complement the newfound handling prowess from the Biturbo's 2.5-liter three-valve per-cylinder V6. The source of most of its punch, two small turbochargers, hence the name Biturbo. For 86, all Biturbos get a revised intake manifold and Weber carburetor. Finally, it's one with an automatic choke. West Coast versions of the Biturbo E get an intercooler installed by the West Coast importer. That engine makes 11% more horsepower, but isn't sanctioned by the folks at the head office in Modena. Our East Coast arrival had the standard engine, with 185 horsepower and 205 pound-feet of torque. Straight line performance was sparkling. The Biturbo E managed a fast 15.6 second quarter mile, with a line crossing speed of 85. And the twin turbos do their job of spinning up quickly and making power early, so bottom end acceleration was fast too. Zero to 60, 7.5 seconds, at a 40 to 55 passing time of only 3.2 seconds. Stopping is a bi-turbo forte as well, thanks to its fine German-made ATE disc brakes. Our 84 bi-turbo stopped in an amazingly short 100 feet. Our Biturbo E didn't fare quite as well, with a 118-foot average from 55. That's still, though, very good, and the E stopped just as straight as his forebearer. Inside, there's the same plush Biturbo luxury, right down to the tasteful but still fake wood grain and the leather facing upholstery for the front and for the back seats. Yet there is a feature here that comes only on the Biturbo E head restraints for the rear seat passengers, positioned low enough so they won't block driver vision out the back. As in other bi-turbos, there are rear window shades that keep the sun off the leather and back seat drivers. For the front seat driver, the E gets a fine, nardy wood rim steering wheel. It bolts to the standard bi-turbo two-way adjustable steering column. Instrumentation includes a boost gauge and a 160 mile per hour speedometer, again as on past bi-turbos. And if you want to get to your luggage, you still have to consult the lever inside the door. When you do, there's enough luggage room in the back to accommodate carry-ons for two adults, though liftover is high and the trunk opening is on the short side. At least you won't have to take the luggage out to get to the spare tire if you have a flat, thanks to a crank-down spare located under the trunk. On the highway, the sporty Biturbo E holds on to its luxury status with a low 67 decibels of sound at 55 miles per hour. As you'd expect, the highway ride is a bit firmer than the standard car. Fuel economy is in the if you can afford the car, you can afford to run it class. The Biturbo E is EPA rated at 13 city, 19 highway. We got 15 in 100 miles of average driving. Indeed, nothing about the Biturbo E is paltry. It'll set you back $27,382, but that does include the $1,000 gas guzzler tax. 
but the Biturbo E's handling improvements are worth the extra grand or so over the standard car. Again, we were also impressed by the Biturbo's power and by many of its small features, the crank down spare tire, the plush interior, and the high level of fit and finish. We were not impressed by the Biturbo E's fuel economy, and we wonder if fuel injection in place of the carburetor wouldn't help. The Biturbo steering needs some attention too. It's heavy at low speeds and even a little vague at high speeds. But there's more coming from Modena, as Maserati is paying more attention to creature comforts this year, with a new four-door Maserati 425. It's based on the Biturbo, but here an automatic and power steering are standard. Also just added, the Zagato designed Spider. Both the Maserati 425 four-door and the convertible will be priced around the $30,000 mark. So while the original Biturbo may not be for everyone's taste, now there's the Biturbo E, also the 425, and the Spider. Together, there are four twin turbocharged Maserati flavors to choose from. So if you're lucky enough to be the kid in the candy store with lots of chains, your choice will now be ever so much harder.